Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Magic News with Magic Ridge. I'm your host, Ridge. Nice to meet you. Today is June 30th, and we are. it is official day two of Adventures of the Forgotten Realm. Spoilers. Uh, what, I, what I'm doing lately, though, is I currently have a giveaway going on right now, and it does not end for another two weeks. The giveaway ends uh, July 14th. So, I'll be picking the winners, multiple. Uh, there's going to be three winners, third, second, and first place. Coming up here on the 14th, so you got plenty of time to enter the giveaway. Uh, you can win three boosters, two boosters, or one booster pack. Uh, all new stuff, Strixhaven, Kaldheim, Rising, uh, Zendikar Rising, um, and the absolutely the newest, most wonderful thing on the street is the Modern Horizons 2. Uh, we get the draft packs. They're worth some good money. Every 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 winner is going to get one. Uh, like I said, drawing once again on the fifteenth or so. Uh, so you got two weeks. Enter the giveaway. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, all you got to do is subscribe to Magic Ridge, leave a thumbs up and, on the video where the uh, the giveaway is, along with a comment. Uh, that's how I pick the winners through the comments there. So make sure you leave me a comment subscribe thumbs up You know th th thumbs up this video while, while you're at it, you know, who'd you hear it from what's going on? And I cannot wait any longer ladies and gentlemen good luck with that But we must continue with the spoiler season official of the Magic the Gathering product um, Adventures of Forgotten Realms, okay? So, first up, I've got Ray of Frost. Um, it is a blue card. It costs one mana of any color and in one blue mana. So, 2 CC for a enchantment. It's looking like it might be an enchant aura. Uh, like I said, some of these spoilers, especially the first couple days or so, often has some different language stuff. So, you gotta go through the translations and stuff. Some people ask me sometimes, hey, what's up with those cards? Well, now you know. All right, so it says, Lash, Enchant Creature, when uh, Ray of Frost enters the battlefield, if the Enchanted Creature is red, tap it. As long as the Enchanted Creature is red, it loses all abilities. Enchanted Creature does not untap during its controller's untap step. A lot of stuff going on there in blue for two mana in blue. Very nice. Moving right along, we have another one here. We have Ken Ear Sentry. Okay. Uh, he or she costs one mana of any color and one white mana, so two CC. For a 2 1 creature of some sorts, looks like a soldier. Um, it's an uncommon soldier at that. Uh, it says, you have Hexproof. There's some other cards out there that already do that. Uh, the next one part, though, has opponents cannot venture into the dungeon more than once per turn. So this is trying to slow down the new dungeon players. Here's the counter dungeon card. So you got to count keep... I mean, it, it seems like you still get to do it, but it's only one dungeon thing a turn. So looks like you might be able to do those dungeons more than once, like the movement through them so we'll see that seems exciting so yeah once again just just in case i missed anything it says you have hex proof and opponents cannot venture into the dungeon more than once per turn okay uh two one once again looks like a soldier it's white it's terrible it's probably terrible uh keen what is it here it is keen ear sentry weird okay Next up, we have Bar the Gate. Bar the Gate, ladies and gentlemen, for two mana of any color and an island, 3cc. We have an instant speed counter target creature or planeswalker spell, and you get to venture into the dungeon, folks. Okay? And then in parentheses, it says enter the first room of advance to the next room. Or advance to the next room, rather. Excuse me there. Um, and it has a little flavor boy here. It says... This path is closed to you. Okay, there you go. Next up, we have Dwarf Hold Champion for one man of any color. And then uh, Planes, 2cc. We have a creature type Dwarf 
Warrior 3-1. As long as Dwarf Hold Champion is equipped, it gets plus zero, plus two. All right, what do you want from a common? You know what I'm saying? Next up, we got Violette. Okay, for three men of any color and a forest, force, four CC creature type beast. 3-3, three, three, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Bulettes. Lots of flavor there. We'll let you get in that while I, while I hydrate. Excuse me there while I get a little drink. Moving on, we have Feign Death. Okay, for one uh, swamp, one black mana, one CC, instant spell, instant speed rather, uh, black. Until end of turn, target creature gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So if it dies, recur it with a counter on it, comes back bigger, badder, by one in black. Okay, pretty good. I like it. Next up, you have You Find a Cursed Idol. Oh no. I really like the artwork and everything on this. Uh, one mana of any color and a forest, so two CC. We're keeping the CC mighty low on a lot of these spells too, I see, which is really cool. Um, we have a sorcery, right? So choose one. You can smash it, destroy target artifact. Good. Next up, we have Lis uh, Lift the Curse. Destroy target enchantment. Sounds right on right on cue, right? Right where it should be for the two mana and green. Next up, though, we have another option. We have Steal Its Eyes. Ooh, I agree. Create a treasure token and venture into the dungeon. Very nice. Very nice green dungeon. Uh, also acts as artifact enchantment removal. I like this a lot right here. It has... It fits right in your enchantment removal slot and ventures you into the dungeon if that's something you want to do in Commander or whatever. Set your playing standard, etc. Whatever's dungeoning right now. Uh, next up, we have Yuan Tai Malison. Okay? Or something like that. I think I butchered this guy's name. Uh, you can't pronunciate everything, unfortunately. Or I can't. I'm mad. For one man of any color and a uh, island, you have a 2cc creature snake rogue. It is a 2-1. It's got a little extra that front action. Must be that head. It's a very big head he's got there. Uh, Yuan Tai Malison can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. Okay, so it's like a unblockable uh, if you attack with more than one. Oh no. Can it be the only one attacking? It might have it's gotta be the only one attacking maybe to get that unblockable. I'm not sure. Next up we have whenever you sun tear Malison deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. Two one. Let's go revisit the other thing too. It says you tie Mason can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. Yes, that's right. So if you only attack with this snake rogue, that is when you get the unblockable. Okay, moving right along. That's very good, too. I like rogues. I like rogues, and we have some more rogue love uh, right up here. So we have Yuan Tai Fang Blade for two mana of any color, and a Swamp 3cc creature type Snake Rogue. Once again, we have another Snake Rogue. It is a 2-2 with Death Touch, though. This guy, don't touch him. Death may come. Whenever Yuan Tai Fang Blade leaves deals combat damage to a player player venture into the dungeon so this guy manages to hit you go right into that dungeon next up we have half elf monk for three men of any color and a planes four cc for a one four creature type human elf monk with vigilance uh it also has stunning strike for one man of any color and a plane so for two mana and tapping this monk, you can tap target creature. Uh, you can decide whether or not that's value. Or where it's value. You know, where is this valued? Next up, you've got your ambushed 
on the road. That's unfortunate. For one white mana, one CC instant speed, you get to choose one of these options. So you can make a retreat, okay? Uh, return target creature you control to its owner's hand. Pretty cool. Uh, you can do a lot with that right there. In itself, you can save your commander uh, so you don't pay two more for it, etc. Whatever, yada yada. Uh, insert any card name there as well. Next up, you have stand and fight. Target creature gets plus one, plus three until, until end of turn. So you have a combat trick as well if you just need that one extra damage that somebody wouldn't see come in to take out their creature. Give it a little extra back end there, put three in the defense. Uh, so your guy maybe lives. Uh, pretty cool. What are you going to do for a common, like I said? <laughs> Next up, we have Air Cult Elemental for four man of any color, and then Island Island 6cc for a creature type elemental. It is a common, once again, it is a 2-5 flying elemental. Uh, it has Whirlwind, so when Air Cult Elemental enters the battlefield, Return up to one other target creature to its owner's hand. So you have up to one creature bounced uh, for a 2-5 flying elemental. Uh, limited, maybe? Eh? I don't know. Next up, we have Clever Conjurer for two mana of any color and an island. 3cc for a creature type Gnome Wizard. He is a 2-3. He's a little extra of that back end. Booty, little extra booty. Uh, he also has a mage's hand, or some, a mage gave him a handy. I'm not sure here. Uh, I have to look. It says untap target permanent, not named clever conjurer. So it can't be himself. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay. I'm always happy to lend a hand. He says he's happy to hand out them hands. He'll throw them hands, man. All right, moving on. We have Shambling Ghast for one black mana. Uh, one CC here. Creature Zombie 1-1. One, one. So far, all of this looking very nice for a one drop. Uh, when Shambling Ghast dies, choose one. So you have a couple options if this guy dies, which you might. Chump blocking or attacking early on or whatever you have him here for. Uh, he has a couple of things here. He has a couple options. We have Brave the Stench. So, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So, acts as the smallest removal. Uh, and then you have Search the Body. You can create a treasure token. So, it's an artifact with sacrifice, an artifact to add one man of any color. So, we can also make a treasure token, okay? Um, I mean, at least it does things, right? When it dies, it's a common. Once again, what are you going to do? Next up, we have Grim Wanderer. The artwork on this guy looks awesome. Uh, I love the fact that we have what looks to be like a tall goblin warlock. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so once again, we have Grim Wanderer for one mana. And a black mana, uh, Swamp 2cc, very nice on the cc here as well. We have a creature type Goblin Warlock, he's uncommon, he's a 5-3. There's a lot of that extra front, look at them tentacles or whatever's coming off him, something's going on there. He has Flash, and he has a tragic backstory. So, cast this spell only if a creature died this turn, so... One of your other creatures had to die in order to flash this guy in as a 5-3 for 2 mana. Um, but it's good. Definitely going to be playable here for sure. This is playable by far. Next up, we've got Meteor Swarm for X mana of any color. A followed up by Mountain Mountain Mountain, so 3 mana plus X. We have a Sorcery Speed in red. We have Meteor Swarm deals 8 damage divided as you choose among X target creatures and or Planeswalkers. Uh, that's okay, that doesn't seem super great, unless I'm missing something there. Next up, we've got You Come to the Gnoll Camp. You've, you come to the Gnoll Camp. Boy? Yeah, boy? 
One man of any color in the mountain. 2cc instant speed. Choose one, mother trucker. Alright. We got intimidate them. Yeah, what's good? You trying to get... What's up? Catch a fade. What's going on? And we got up to two target creatures. Can't block this turn. They're like, uh-uh. You can get in here, boy. Get your licks in. You know what I'm saying? Next up, we got fend them off. Okay? Target creature gets plus three, plus one until end of turn. I don't think you'll take both of them on, but you'll probably take one out. Um, so you have a combat trick there. Excuse me again while I hydrate. Um, so yeah, fend them off. Plus three, plus one. Intimidate. I like the intimidate on that. Like again, what are you going to do for a common? Uh, but it's very good. I like the artwork as well. Uh, reptile and armor. Next up, sir, we have another reptile being over here, a knight-looking fella in armor. You have, you find some prisoners, prisoners of war or something. We have, for one man of any color in a mountain, 2cc instant speed, you get to choose one sirs or madams or little madams or little sirs. <laughs> we have break their chains, destroy tower get artifact. Artifact go bye bye. Uh, that's good. Uh, the other option is interrogate them. So exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Uh, that looks pretty relevant at the end there. Um, depending on whose deck, what deck, what's going on there. Um, that second part can be very, very good for you. Um, you find some prisoners, huh? Prisoners of war. I'm liking this. The hype's real right here on this guy. Uh, fellas, link your peepers on this guy. What do you think? Check this, this out. This, uh, interrogate them seems actually pretty good, I think, right? Am I crazy? Um, specifically an EDH there, anyhow. I'm going to pass along now so we can keep getting into her because it's probably going to be a long one. Uh, we have Noel Hunter, okay? For one man of any color and a forest 2cc. We have a creature type Noel. It is a 2-2. Two -two. I like the fact that we have Noels. Uh, I played World of Warcraft for like three years originally and then I came back and played uh, Classic for like another year or something like that four years uh very interesting and these guys definitely do those justice not that anybody did this or that uh in its own right they don't look anything exact but they definitely look very nice very complimentary knolls they're not lacking you know uh very cool very cool so this guy has pack tactics like a lot of other stuff has had so whenever Noel Hunter attacks, if you attack with creatures with total power, six or more greater this combat, put a plus one, plus one counter on just the Noel Hunter here. Okay, moving right along, we have You Happen on a Glade. I'm not sure what a Glade is. Perhaps like a waterway or something with water. Maybe like a, uh, kind of like how we have, um, wherever we get our water from, springs. Springs is what I was thinking there. So for two mana of any color and then one forest. Three CC, sir. You have an instant speed. Choose one. So your first op option is to journey on. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, and then shuffle. Uh, that right there, it doesn't say to put one into play, unfortunately. Or that would be ramp, but where that's at, that's actually not ramp, even though you're getting two cards in hand. You're like, how am I getting two cards in hand and that not being ramp? Because it kind of doesn't ramp you because it doesn't play a land for free yet. I, I haven't got to the last option yet. I'm just explaining there why that's not ramp, okay? Um, next, we have make camp. So return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, that last one, though, is a very, very, very good, okay? Obviously, if it's in the graveyard, uh, somebody thought it was a threat and killed it, or it's a card you've already played that you really like, because you're playing it in your EDH deck or whatever have you. 
So this is very good. Uh, you happen on the glade. Uh, it's going to be a good thing. Like I said, I think in both cases, for the most part. Uh, next up, we have a legend. Okay, very cool. We have Shesara, Death's Whisper. She's whispering to a skull or something. Um, it costs two men of any color, along with a swamp and forest. Four CC. For a legendary creature, Human Elf Warlock. Mixed breed, mixed blood there. Human Elf Warlock, uncommon, 1-3, okay, power and toughness, with Bewitching Whispers, is like an attack or something, I like how these all have these little categories here, so when Shirasa, uh, Sh Shisara, rather, my bad, Death's Whisper enters the battlefield, target creature blocks this turn if able, so it kind of gets like a lure effect put on it, uh, lure is very good, very good. Very good, very good, sir. Very good. Next up, we've got Whispers of the Grave. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay two mana. Oh, you may pay two life, rather, if you do draw a card. Uh, draw a card, two life. Not terrible. Uh, card draw, good. Uh, very cool. Um, not bad, not bad. Next up, we have a land. We have Dungeon, uh, dungeon Descent. Uh, enters the battlefield tap. It produces a colorless mana. You can pay four mana and tap this land, so essentially five lands, to tap an untapped legendary creature you control and venture into the dungeon. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, moving on, we have another legendary creature in the uncommon variety, which is not terribly bad. We have Hama Pashar. Rune Seeker, okay, for one man of any color in a plains island. 3 CC, not bad for a 2 3. A little bit of extra booty on this lady or sir, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, could go either way, I guess. Um, for a legendary creature, Human Wizard, so we have some wizard stuff, wizard tribal. Uh, one tribal I've been, I maybe dabbled a little bit in back in the day, not much lately. Uh, we have Room Abilities of Dungeons you own. Trigger an additional time. So here's the culprit that makes the dungeons activate a second time per turn. Uh, so I was saying you probably only did it once per turn. Just assuming stuff. I was just talking out my bot the other day. Just assuming you can only do it once a turn. So here's a guy that allows you to do it twice a turn. And there was a card earlier that kind of like halved it or something or makes it so you can't play this one one person or something this wouldn't make it work i don't know but it was it's good stuff it's good it's good stuff next up we have another legend but in the rare uh i'm pretty i'm pretty interested by just glancing at him uh next up we have zalto fire giant duke okay for three men of any color in Mountain Mountain, 5 CC is a bit on the hefty side. He is a 7-3 legendary creature, giant barbarian. First strike would be nice. He has trample, though. Not first strike, sadly. Whenever a Zalto fire giant duke is dealt damage, venture into the dungeon. So no matter what. Playing this guy, you're probably going to pop into a dungeon, do be doing dungeon things. So, that's that's a thing. Mono red. Next up, we have a mono green commander. We have Varus, Silvery Moon Ranger. For one mana of any color and forest forest. 3 CC. We have a 3-3 three, three legendary creature human elf ranger. Uh, I have a ranger lord, but I don't think that's going to go very far here. Um, we have a reach... Ward 1. So it's got a little bit of evasion on the removal and reach. Whenever you cast a creature or planeswalker spell, venture into the dungeon. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever you complete a dungeon, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So this is a green card that is heavily, uh, heavily involved with the dungeon mechanic here, making wolves. And uh, you get to enter the dungeon with this guy, um, an elf, so that's not bad. 
more ways to get in the dungeon. Next up, we have Frog Hemoth. Frog Hemoth for three mana of any color in Forest Forest. 5 CC creature type Frog Horror. Of course, we're going to have a Frog Horror. He's a 4 4 with Trample and Haste. Um, excuse me once again. Whenever Frog Hammoth deals combat damage to a player, exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Frog Hemoth for each creature card exiled this way. You gain one life for each non-creature card exiled this way. So that seems very good. Uh, too bad this guy's not a legend. That would have been cool, uh, Commander, kind of. Especially if it was his four, it would have been probably pretty good, too. Um, so there we go, Frog Hemoth. That's a thing. Moving on, we have a Knight. We have Triumphant Adventure for one white mana and a Swamp. So 2cc for a creature human knight is a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch. As long as it's your turn, Triumphant Adventure has First Strike. Cool. But it's got to be your turn. And then whenever Triumphant Adventure attacks, um, venture into the dungeon. So I like this guy. Uh, this guy could also go in my knight deck. So there's two knights that can help me get into the dungeon. The, the Dragon Knight and this one. Uh, it's rare. All, all options. Just saying. Um, you know, it'd be co it's cool to put new mechanics and things. Okay. Dungeon stuff. Next up, we have Earth Cult Elemental for four mana of any color in Mountain Mountain. Six CC for a creature type elemental. Uh, this isn't uncommon, but has a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of it's uh, around a rolling a d20, I believe. So it's kind of cool. Um, I know there's some other games. We'll we'll just talk Games Workshop real quick, and uh, like Warhammer 40k stuff like that. That game is like heavily on rolling dice. It's a, a, I mean, I, one side is obviously building and painting and artistic side of things and mashing and lots of money for those things too and stuff, hobby, whatever. And then, um, but my point is that it's heavy on the rolls and stuff. Um, you roll a lot of dice to make a lot of triggers happen. So it's cool to see with this Earth's Colt Elemental that we've got a lot of roll stuff going on here. So he's a 6-6. Six, six. He has this, so he has Siege Monster. So when Earth Cult Elemental enters the battlefield, you get to roll a D20, 20-sided dice, okay? If you get a 1 through 9, each player sacrifices a permanent. Ouch. You know what I'm saying? Woo, that hurts. Uh, 10 through 19 is each opponent sacrifices a permanent. Uh, ouch. Uh, that one hurts, too. Wait, did you say each player? Oh, then each opponent. And then if you perfectly roll a 20 somehow, each opponent sacrifices two permanents with this guy. Just coming to the battlefield, getting lucky on a roll. Um, obviously, the 1 through 9, the 10 through 19 are likely to happen. And it's pretty much either everybody or just opponent sack creature. So it's pretty good. The problem is that it's 6 CC here. It's uh, a lot of mana. I mean, it is a 6-6. Six, six. It's not, like, terrible, but it's probably not the best in the 6 slot there. Next up, we have Chaos Chandler for 2 mana of any color and a uh, Mountain Mountain 4 CC. We have a creature type Human Shaman. He was a 4-3. He's got a little extra that front action, if you know what I'm talking about. A little of that action. Yeah, dog. He's got that Wild Magic Surge. That's what he's got. So whenever Chaos Chandler attacks, roll a d20. Very similar to the other guy there. So if you get a 1 through 9, you can exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Okay. And then we have 10 through 19. Exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Holy smokes. Call me. Call me. We'll just leave it at that. Next up, next up, uh, if you somehow roll a perfect 20, the best roll you can on a d20, you can exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Holy smokes. This guy is insane. Wow. 
Um, I don't know if you can't, I don't think it says you play them for free, which would be even crazier, but just, you can play them, you know? It's, I'm, I'm imagining lands even, you could probably play lands, saying you can play them, you know? Hey, very cool, Chaos Chandler, uh, very, very good on common, will it be over a dollar? I have no idea, I hope so. Next up, we've got Kick in the Door, yeah the heck I will. Where at? What's good? What's going down? One red mana, one CC, sorcery speed. Slow down, sir. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. That creature gains haste until end of the turn and can't be blocked by walls this turn. Venture into the dungeon. Enter the first room or advance to the next room in the dungeon. So it's looking like for that dungeon mechanic, it might have to be certain cards. You might have to play them in syncrasy, rather. My bad. Uh, so basically, it might be looking like you're going to be stuck in that dungeon in one spot unless you advance to the next spot with another venture into the dungeon. Okay? So that makes it a little weaker, I think. But it's adding to the puzzle. It's adding to the puzzle. So, drafting this set, stuff like that, drafts, I'd be specifically looking for this kind of stuff, probably. Um, anyhow, moving right along, we have Dungeon Map for 3 mana of any color, 3 CC, Artifact, tap it, add 1 mana of, uh, 1 colorless mana. So we have a uh, 3 mana, mana rock right here. It also has for 3 mana, you can tap it to venture into a dungeon, activate only as a sorcery. So this is, this is your dungeon friend as well. Advancing you through a dungeon and acting as mana rock. So this is probably good It's pretty good if, if the dungeon mechanic becomes a decent thing and people like it people are using it That's probably gonna be used right along with it uh, Next up we have borrowing Borrowing of clan under For two men of any color and a plains swamp 4 cc we have a legendary creature dwarf cleric he is a 3-3 three, three. when Barov Barowin of Clan Under enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Enter the first room or advance to the next room of the dungeon they're talking about. New dungeon mechanic. Next, whenever Barowin of Clan Under attacks, return up to one creature card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield if you've completed a dungeon. Okay there, so the my favorite dungeon is going to take the longest to get through, so I'm going to have to have pretty much all venture into the dungeon type effects, I would think. And I don't know if there's going to be enough unless you played like five colors or something like that. I have no idea. Um, it'll be cool to look into it and see what happens. Uh, next up, we have a red sorcery, improvise weaponry for two men of any color and a mountain. It's red, three CC sorcery speed. Improvise weaponry deals two damage to any target. Create a treasure token. Yes, sir. Next up, we have Drader for four men of any color and a swamp five CC. Um, here we go. I'm excited. Uh, he is a 4-3 creature that is black, that is also uncommon, so I don't know if those are good things, but it has a reach, it's going to interact with that uh, spider planeswalker, I forget all, all about that, but uh, it has reach, and whenever Drider deals combat damage to a player, create a 2-1 spider creature token with menace and reach as well, and that's what Drider does. So, pretty cool there. Oh. We're getting lost. We're getting lost, man. Um, so yeah, that was Drider. What is after Drider? Just uh, bear with me. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. Uh, and day, uh, morning. Hope you had a great breakfast. Are you having a wonderful dinner tonight? Have planned? Uh, whatever. All right, moving right along, we have a multicolored creature here uh, with the name of 
Faraday. Faraday. Okay? As multicolored is a 3-3. Three, three. C. Cost two mana of any color in an island mountain. So 4 CC for a 3-3 three, three is its cost here. Is a legend of some sorts. Uncommon. Uncommon. And here is what's on the card. So whenever you roll a die, she gets menace and flying until end of turn. Uh, if any of those result in a 10 or higher, the draw that is, so those d20s probably. Uh, so if you roll a d20 and you get a 10 or higher, uh, it looks like you draw a card. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we have an ant situation here. That's why I'm fidgeting. Um... So yeah, if you get a 10 or higher on a roll, well this card's around, you draw a card, um, and you're going to also get Menace and Flying um, while rolling dice with her around. Uh, next up, I don't know if I got this one. Oh, I did. So next up we've got Faraday's Fireball. So for three mana of any color in Mountain Mountain 5cc, we have a red instant at common. It's a common instant. I believe you're going to roll here. So here's the scoop. It uh, deals 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker. And you get to roll a d20. 1 through 9 is going to deal 2 damage to each player. Okay? Anything 10 through 20 is going to deal 2 damage to each opponent instead. And it's not going to hit you. Uh, so that's the scoop on that. It is only an uncommon. Uh, you know, what, do you, what, what can you... We, what can you ask for, you know? It is still the lower of the... It's the lowest of the low. In rarity, you know. It's not too meant to be crazy. After that, we have another card. Up next is Fate's Reversal. We have a lot of spoilers coming up. Uh, we're, we're nearing the end here today, but I will be back tomorrow. Uh, like I said, this week is loaded with videos. I think I had regular videos for Wednesday, Thursday, and a deck tech on Friday. So, it's a sweet week. Sweet week. Uh, Fate's Reversal for one man of any color in a swamp, 2cc sorcery speed. Return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And you get to venture in the dungeon, so you get to enter a dungeon or pro progress further into the dungeon. Next up, we have Spiked Pit Trap for one man of any color. Uh, one CC artifact. It has flash for five mana and tapping this artifact. You can sacrifice pit trap. Choose target creature, then roll a d20. Okay? If you get a one through nine spike, pit trap deals five damage to that creature. If you get ten through twenty, spike pit trap deals five damage to that creature. And you get to create a treasure token along with it. So five damage or five damage and you get a token. You're going to roll a d20 so it activates that other card if you get it in limited or whatever, etc. Um, flash. Low CC at 1. Uh, artifact can be played in most anything. Pretty good. Uh, I believe last spoiler of the evening, unless they spoiled something else that is not going to be in this video, will be in tomorrow's video. But this popped up right before I was about to get to shoot. So we have the, the plus 2 mace for one man of any color and then, then a planes so two cc we have a white ish artifact equipment um equipped creature gets plus two plus two and has an equipped cost of three mana of any color uh it's pretty high though but the artwork is pretty good for what it is and i like it a lot uh good luck to all those who entered the giveaway uh i'll see y'all tomorrow for tomorrow's uh, spoilers, uh, they will spoil all week long. Uh, we probably went over like 45 spoilers today, so definitely pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful evening, uh, better tomorrow. Hope you're having the best lunch or breakfast of your life. Till tomorrow.